Greetings, this is Professor Spira, and I am excited to share with you the following free lesson from the Mucusless Diet Healing System e-course. Lesson 15, Transition Diet, Part 1. This thing is chock full of information about the Mucusless Diet Healing System with a focus on the food because folks are really wanting to know what can I eat, how should I eat it, all of those things. This is where... Arnold Aaron really starts to break down his approach to uh, proper transition. As you constantly hear me talking about transition, transition, transition. These are the lessons and this is lesson 15 uh, from the e-course. If you click the link below, you'll find a page with all the downloads that you would get if you were enrolled in the e-course. With each lesson, there's a number of downloads and ancillary materials. So I've provided that. Uh, all you got to do is click the link and you'll get immediate access. You don't have to share an email address or anything. You'll just get access to those downloads. And uh, also the, uh, the follow-up quiz overview video in there. You'll see what I'm talking about when you watch the video. If you are interested in the Mucus's Diet Healing System at all, I really encourage you and invite you to enroll in the Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course uh, to get a really great deal. There's a coupon code uh, that you can find down below in the description section. And this is one lesson out of over 26 lessons filled with information about the Mucus's Diet. There's even a few food preparation videos that you'll have uh, access to immediately uh, as soon as you purchase the e-course. So without any further ado, please enjoy Lesson 15 of the Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course. Greetings. In this session, we're talking about Lesson 15, Transition Diet, Part 1. Let's jump right in. We have a lot to talk about. Nature's mills grind slow but sure. Everything is perfectly prepared by nature through evolutional progressive changes and not by catastrophes. In other words, focus on gradualism, progressive change, and avoid overexerting yourself, which will ultimately end or could end in catastrophe. A carefully selected and progressively changing transition diet is the best and safest way for every patient to start healing. Especially if you are somebody coming from a standard mixed diet, but even if you're coming from a more advanced uh, diet, or we'd say more advanced, but the, the raw foods diets or the uh, fruit only diets, uh, maybe you've practiced that for some time and you've got, went as far as you could go and, you, and you're starting to get negative symptoms, you don't know what's wrong, you think you're doing everything great, yet you failed to transition. So we need to re-engage re with the uh, evolutional and progressive changes that your body needs to go through. And not only your body, but also your mind. It's not just a transition for the physical, this is also about transitioning yourself mentally and I've seen so many people who have tried to skip over this step and they missed out on transitioning themselves mentally as well as physically. Nothing is more incorrect than the mistaken idea that a decades old chronic disease can be healed through a very long fast or a radically extended strict fruit diet. Very important quote by Arnold Errett that puts him uh, in his own category in some ways, because I, I still rarely to this day hear a lot of people talking about transition and especially transition technology as we are about to talk about right now. Mucus lean, let's define this. I've used this term a few times throughout our sessions, but let's go over this. So that's a diet that still has some mucus forming foods in it and such foods are good for the transition diet. And I have a picture here of some nuts with dried fruit with some raisins, and we would consider that a mucus lean uh, uh, kind of meal. Transition means to the slow change from disease producing foods to disease healing foods. Mucus lean and mucusless may be viewed as different phases or modes or periods 
of the long-term transition. So within a long-term context, you can think of yourself going, uh, going in and out of various levels or various mo I like to use the word modes, various modes or phases or periods of the transition. So you go and you might start off in a mucus lean period and then you get a little bit more progressive and you eat totally mucus free for a week or several weeks or several months. Then maybe you drift, you start craving some mucus again and then you get deeper into some of the mucus lean options. But all mucus lean meals will always have raw mucus free items in there as well. So you're never just supposed to eat mucus lean or mucus forming foods with, without a big salad. That's an important principle. Uh, write that down and, and, and start following that immediately. Anytime, it's not the end of the world if you eat mucus, but I urge you to always eat mucus with a big salad uh, and we will get a little bit deeper into what the salads look like just keep that in mind. The speed of elimination depends upon the quantities and qualities of the food being used. Uh, and this can be controlled by the practitioners. If you eat a large quantity of oranges, that's going to be more aggressive than if you eat a small quantity of vegetables. And if you eat a large quantity of vegetables, that's going to really slow down your elimination. Uh, more way quicker than if you had even say some uh, a, a large amount of cooked fruit uh, the uh, stewed or baked fruit uh, and, and you'll you'll gain this this understanding and this knowledge as you do it as you start to experiment with these menus and experiment with this way of eating and transitioning you will see what foods act uh, uh, act in different ways, which foods slow down your elimination, which foods are very uh, have a laxative effect, which foods broom out your intestines, you will see this. And these foods can change over time. What works now in a certain capacity might do something different later on, but this is the kind of, uh, of internal analysis and observation that we're going to get into. According to Eric, the worst habit of all time is that of eating a heavy breakfast. Eric says no solid food should be eaten in the morning for the best results. Some juice or some fruit, if craved, is the best to consume in the morning. And uh, this is something at, that was fairly easy for me to jump on pretty early in my transition. Uh, I could just uh, drink, drink liquids in the morning and then have my first meal. In the afternoon, uh, if you find that that's hard, then uh, really try to avoid having anything other than fruit in the morning. But if you do need something, uh, definitely stay away from that standard eggs and bacon and all that kind of. It's just the worst, the worst thing that you could do. Of course, in uh, uh, in this opposite land. Uh, through the mir mirror, uh, through the looking glass world, everything is just backward. And so this idea of needing this, this great big breakfast and uh, get your day started right and all this kind of stuff, uh, not only was, can you trace a lot of that to, uh, to marketing ploys to try to sell stuff like bacon and some of these, these morning lunch meats, uh, but it's also tied to just some of the worst uh, illnesses that you could imagine. Uh, a number of minor ailments can be healed with the non-breakfast plan alone. Never drink during a meal. Super important principle. You know, I always talk about principles. This is a principle of the mucus's diet healing system. Never drink during a meal. Now, this one was a little bit harder for me to do, but I still was able to pretty much do this from the beginning. And uh, as I used to drink quite a bit throughout the meal, I'd eat a little bit and then drink and eat a little bit and drink. But uh, I, when I started this, I just didn't even have a drink around. Okay, I'm gonna eat this meal. And then I, and in those days, I would uh, wait a little while and then, and then drink. Uh, if a beverage is craved during your meal, wait a short time until after you've eaten uh, and before drinking. And early on, I didn't wait that long. I might wait five or 10 minutes, which really isn't long enough, but I was craving something to drink because I, I normally would do that. 
Then I got to a point where I wouldn't drink anything a after a meal until maybe an hour, hour and a half later. And now I really don't, I don't normally drink anything after a meal for the rest of the day. So if I have my evening meal, I'm not going to drink anything until the next day, you know, next morning or, or afternoon. So soups should be avoided. Uh, soups with liquid and solid food items should be avoided with meals. Uh, as the, the more liquid taken in, the more difficult for proper digestion. And this is within reason. I mean, early on in your transition, before you really get your intestines and your stomach clean, uh, a little bit of some vegetable soup here and there uh, it isn't going to... Uh, it isn't going to be terrible, but in, in terms of a principle, this is yet another principle of the transition diet, uh, you don't want to mix liquids with solid foods. And that's what soup is, the uh, soups that, that aren't just broth, the soups that have the chunky stuff in it uh, or are very thick, they are... Uh, uh, the body has trouble really dealing with that and digesting it and it's particularly maybe not right now maybe you could eat that now and you say well i don't have a problem with it but you'll notice as you start to transition and you start to reorganize your, your stomach and your entire gi tract that it will get problematic and uh and, and indigestion will happen and you'll notice that uh, uh you might notice bowel movements aren't as they should be it just complicates matters uh, broth alone is better option if you want a warm if a warm drink is desired. And this principle of the soups and not combining liquid with solid food, uh, I also translate that over into the smoothies thing, uh, particularly the vegetable smoothie. So I'm just not a huge fan of vegetable smoothies uh, because I would rather see somebody have the solid item, either have the juice where all the cellulose is taken out or have the solid item and allow the body to to do it as opposed to do and work and work through it uh, of course there's exceptions i'm not saying to never have smoothies i'm not totally just saying this i'm just saying just think keep that in mind that logic uh when you're uh, especially if you're trying to get your digestive system working again uh, i would strongly recommend getting into some of these uh, solid food items that we will discuss a bit. Making a vegetable broth, and this will also come up again later uh, as a potential drink to use uh, during certain fasting situations, uh, but a warm drink can be made by cooking many di uh, uh, different kinds of vegetables for a long period of time, and just any, anything that you have, uh, anything, any vegetables in there, spinach, onions, carrots, cabbages, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, anything that's in there, uh, you can pretty much uh, put, a, put a bunch of water in a, in a pot, throw those vegetables in there, and then boil it. I usually would boil it and simmer it for about an hour. You put a little bit of seasoning in there uh, to taste, and then you can come up with some pretty good broth. But you definitely want to only drink the juice. Do not eat those boiled cooked vegetables though that is not how we eat cooked vegetables we don't eat stuff like that that's totally boiled because they're way too mushy it's lost its ability to have a broom effect and eliminate successfully in your body so do not when you if you make this your own fresh broth vegetable broth do not eat the uh the vegetables those cooked vegetables do not do it but uh, only two meals a day are recommended. Two meals a day. That's the magic number for the standard mucus's diet healing system day and approach. If you're used to having more, maybe you're somebody that grazes all day. You have a little bit of food throughout the day or, uh, or you're used to having three, four, five meals a day. Keep in mind that you can transition yourself toward two meals a day. But instead of having small meals, we recommend having the larger meals. So you could combine the same. You're not necessarily eating less because you're only having two meals. In some cases, you might even eat more because we're eating mucus-free foods. But it's reorganizing how we're putting this food into our body. So even though the quantity 
eating might be as much as three or even four meals, uh, so, which is what I pretty much just said. If possible, the first meal should be eaten between 10 or 11 in the morning, you know, lunchtime uh, kind, of, uh, kind of time. You know, I personally usually would do it more around 12 or 1 o'clock, but that depends on what time you get up. There's a lot of factors with that. Uh, but ultimately a lunchtime meal and then an evening meal that should not be eaten sooner than five or six in the afternoon. Uh, and you can rearrange these hours based on when you get up. And uh, it, the ultimately, you, you, if you get up in the morning, you want, I would say, two to four hours before you have your lunch meal. And then you want to have anywhere from four to six hours uh, uh, before you would have your, your evening meal. And so that's, I'm just generalizing and, and I'm, I'm the type of person, I don't really do a real super strict schedule, but some people prefer to have a strict schedule. And so they'll write this out and they kind of will stay on a very uh, strict regimen. So that's up to you. Cause uh, yeah, some people like to have a very strict, uh, daily schedule and others like to, uh, allow things to free flow, free flow a little bit, but still maintain these principles. So the name of the game is simplicity. Very important. Avoid mixing too many kinds of food in one meal. Avoid fats. Fats of any kind, including the ordinary butter, are unnatural and therefore should be avoided. If you like your fats, it's best to use something, peanut butter or some other kind of nut butter you know, on your bread. So me personally, in the early part of my transition, I did use some soy butter. Now, most of the people I work with don't need that. Uh, they're more advanced than I was when I got started with my transition, but that's the, the key word, transition. I didn't stay there. So, uh, so I, I used to use a little bit of soy butter because I was really craving the, the, the taste of butter. So I would use some soy butter and then move into more of the, uh, the peanut or cashew butter or something like that. Uh, and then ultimately I got off of that altogether. You know, I, I definitely got, got off of the, the soy butter kind of stuff. You know, everybody kind of has their little things that they use that they find useful within the transition. And, uh, and the name of the game is not getting so addicted to something that you stay on it uh, for the rest of your life. The one exception in terms of long-term use, if depending on how you read Eric's work, would be certain oils, the, the olive oil and these things, if you're using them in small amounts as a dressing or uh, uh, within that context. So the menus for the first two weeks so this is lunch example. So the first meal, lunch example. Number one, a combination salad consisting of raw grated carrots or coleslaw or both, lettuce uh, or spinach, half and half, and two or three spoonfuls of stewed or steamed uh, vegetable, such as green peas, string beans, or spinach. And one of the following, cucumbers, tomatoes, green onions, celery, lettuce, etc but only a sufficient quantity for flavoring. Keep in mind, these menus are, you, you can follow them strictly. You can be strict with them, but they are shared to give you a sense of the systematic nature of the diet, what a day looks like practicing the diet. Uh, and so, and I almost look at them like kind of like training wheels. It's kind of here's here's a place for you to start and start your experimentation, explore based on uh, based on these recommendations and these principles. And you uh, you start to guide yourself and your body starts to guide you into finding the uh, the, the best situation. Uh, so you may make an oil dressing and cooked vegetable to put with it. Uh, in oil dressing, you can use uh, lemon juice with some kind of oil, you know, olive oil, grapeseed oil, uh, and uh, avoid vinegar. That's something that Eric very clearly uh, is not a fan of, any, any type of vinegar. 
and so this is for flavoring purposes and you can get into making some some raw dressings uh, there, there's there's various options I you I made a fresh uh, a tomato sauce often that's something that will be discussed in the the vegetarian uh, menu section in a couple lessons uh, but so there, there's options here uh, the rest of the meal should consist of one baked or stewed vegetable, such as cauliflower, beets, parsnips, turnips, squash, uh, etc. Stewed. So, so stewed means to cook slowly in liquid in a closed dish or pan. You can steam the vegetables a little bit. Any, uh, you can stew them a little bit, a little bit of water, uh, and, and the steam kind of rises up if you, if you have it closed up. You can put a little seasoning on it. We use, uh, and I say we, me and people I know that practice a diet, uh, we use the uh, an onion saute quite a bit so we might, might steam the vegetables a little bit. You never want to over steam. You want to just steam enough to make it su uh, sufficiently soft. You just, you get a little bit of that starch out of there, but you don't want to overdo it or it won't eliminate and go through uh, and, and create that broom situation that we're looking for. But um, uh, uh, but we do an onion saute, a little bit of oil, a little bit, little bit of onions or, or garlic pieces, something like that. Uh, if you're a raw foodist, just ignore what I'm saying. But uh, <laughs> some people, but this is this is the reality of what we're talking about with the mucus diet. It's it's not, it's it's just not a strict raw food diet. It is a transitional system, and we use certain kinds of cooked foods to get to a, a, a more mucus free kind of situation and this process should be uh should be enjoyable I mean, Eric says that uh this this should be enjoyable this shouldn't be you breaking your back trying to force yourself to eat a certain way this should be enjoyable this should be something that feels feels good and uh and when you get into this type of regimen and process uh it will uh, help you along and it should allow you to feel uh, feel better. <laughs> uh, if you still feel as though you're hungry, uh, eat a small sized baked sweet potato or one slice of toasted bran or whole wheat bread. So the way that the vegetable meals look in general, you have your combination salad uh, and then the steamed vegetable. Again, not, not a bunch of stuff, maybe one uh, maybe baked zucchini or you know so, something along those lines. I used to do a lot of steamed broccoli and steamed cabbage, steamed collard greens, all this kind of stuff. Um, but I usually, I, uh, but I stick to only having one kind of cooked vegetable in general. Uh, and so then other times maybe I'll have the baked sweet potato. So uh, what you'll see is once you understand how this works, you can trade stuff in for other things. So you can trade in uh, some other kind of cooked vegetable for another vegetable. That, so that's how you can keep the variety going. If you're somebody that really wants variety, you can, uh, the, the main thing is to keep this structure. It's about the, the structure of the meal and the structure of the meal plan throughout the day. So in this case, week one, we're having a, a vegetable meal at lunchtime and that vegetable meal consists of a combination sal salad followed by some kind of cooked vegetable situation. The goal of the meal is to supply the mucus broom that mechanically cleanses the digestive tract. This is done by quantities of raw, baked, and stewed starchless vegetables. This helps eliminate the stored up poisons being loosened during the body's house cleaning. And this may be called Eretz standard combination salad. So I often talk about this in terms of being a vegetable meal. In general, we have fruit meals, vegetable meals, and then we have Eric's two course meal that combines fruit and vegetables in the same meal. So supper, and the uh, example for the first two weeks, Mix half and half a stewed fruit such as applesauce, uh, stewed dried apricots, uh, stewed dried peaches, stewed prunes, or baked banana with some very ripe bananas mashed, uh, uh, sweetened with either brown sugar or honey to taste. So 
lunch meal, we're having a combination salad with vegetables, fairly, uh, fairly hearty. If you want to have, if you're still hungry, uh, have your well-toasted wheat bread, put a little bit of uh, peanut butter on there or something or some, some kind of, if you want, whatever, you know. Uh, then you get to the supper time and we're having a stewed fruit. So many people miss out on the power of the stewed fruit. Okay, so Eric mentions here cottage cheese could be used instead of bananas if there is a great cra craving for dairy. So this would make some vegans unhappy. But again, this transition diet is about getting you off of the worst foods in the world. So this is a, this is a mechanical system. This is about the mechanics. So mechanically, cottage cheese, yogurt, these things eliminate much better in the body than regular forms of cheese. Uh, and it, even, it eliminates better than even some forms of plant-based plant items. Uh, now, I, a lot of the people I work with, they skip, they're able to skip over the cottage cheese stuff. They don't, they don't need that. Uh, and I personally, I used cottage cheese for a couple months, my transition. Uh, like I always say, it took me six months to totally become plant-based. Do what you need to do for your transition. Do what you need to do and experiment with what you need to experiment with. Just know that something like cottage cheese, we do not recommend to use for an extended period of time. It's uh, something very transitional. Menus for the second two weeks. First, lunch example number one. This is what I call Arid's standard two-course meal. First, a baked, uh, some kind of baked uh, fruit item, baked apple, applesauce, or other stewed fruit. After uh, 10 or 15 minutes, then eat the combination salad as suggested in the first menu, uh, as well as bran or whole wheat bread, uh, toasted, well-toasted bread, if desired. By allowing the cooked vegetables to soak in the salad uh, for 10 to 15 minutes, it serves the purpose as a dressing. So, uh, that, uh, so this is the second two weeks. Uh, so we're still, we're still not eating raw fruit yet. If you notice that we still, he still didn't recommend eating raw fruit, uh, because Eric is going to gradually transition us into, uh, into raw fruit. Uh, if you follow this, this plan, uh, in the way it's set up, the supper example includes a baked or stewed vegetable as suggested in the first menu followed by, uh, the vegetable salad made of lettuce and cucumber, uh, a little, little coleslaw, shredded cabbage, and carrots. Menus for the third two weeks. Lunch example number three. During the summer, this should be an exclusive fruit meal, one kind only. Now we're starting to talk about fresh fruits. A month after you started practicing the diet, if you go along with this plan, for that first month, you wouldn't even have raw fruits. You would have stewed or baked fruits, and then by the, the second month you would start to have, uh, you would be ready to have an exclusive fruit meal that could be raw or you could still use uh, baked fruit. In winter, uh, a sweet dried fruit like prunes, figs, raisins, dates even with apples or oranges, or the dried fruits can be chewed together with a few nuts and then followed by, uh, by the fresh fruits. Now remember, if you use nuts, uh, put some time in between the having eaten the nuts and the juicy fruit. I really don't recommend ever having, even doing that personally. Uh, if you're going to have nuts, I recommend having the nuts and raisins and nothing else. Don't even wait 15 minutes followed by uh, the f juicy fruit or something like that. In the long run, that's gonna, that, that will not be good for your stomach. Uh, so ultimately, if you're gonna have a meal that's dried fruit and nuts, then that's it. Dried fruit and nuts, and you could substitute that in there at some point if you need that. Or, if, or at some point if you feel like you need a snack, maybe you're following the guidelines of these other two meals, but you, you find that you're hungry at some other point in between or after those meals or, at some, or, or you're craving mucus. That's when the raisins and nuts 
come into play. If still hungry, wait 10 or 15 minutes and then eat a, a few leaves of lettuce or a cold vegetable, uh, uh, but only a small quantity. So that would be sort of a modified Eretz two course meal if you went with that. But again, we're just giving you options. There's so many options for this and the art of this transition diet is first knowing the options, knowing the different directions that are recommended to take and what, uh, uh, what has worked in the past, uh, uh, knowing the principles, and, and with that knowledge, you can make the right decision in a moment's notice. You, you, uh, this is deduction. You see what you're going through. You feel what's going on. You observe your symptoms. You observe your cravings. And in an instant, you can make the perfect decision. And the right decision can, t can change your life. I mean, you can, you can be in the midst of this and you decide to eat the right thing at the right time and it can totally change the trajectory of your, uh, of your transition and, uh, and have some very important uh, positive changes. So uh, the supper example for the third two weeks, a combination salad as suggested in the first menu, followed by a baked vegetable. Again, that's our standard vegetable meal. Now menus for the fourth two weeks, now we're, we're getting simpler. Fruits as in the previous menus uh, for the lunchtime, just a fruit meal, period. Uh, the best situation is to have a, a raw fruit meal with one type of fruit. For this supper meal we have the Eretz two course meal. Fruits either baked or stewed or fresh, followed later by cold cooked vegetable or uh, even better a vegetable salad or combine vegetable salad with the uh, cooked vegetable. I tend to all, if, if I'm going to have a cooked vegetable, I always have a raw salad with it, just period. For me, that's, that's a principle uh, because I find that you, you always wanna have that raw salad a uh, combination salad to help move things through if you're having some kind of cooked vegetable. So let's kind of overview this and I want to try to show you something that I didn't get at first when I first read the book and started practicing a diet. I didn't notice how, uh, how elegant this is that what we just went over. So check this out. So the first two weeks, lunch, combination salad, baked vegetable, supper time, baked or stewed fruit. That, for the first two weeks every day, that would be uh, ultimately what you would do to summarize. For the second two weeks, lunchtime would be baked or stewed fruit, followed by a combination salad, air it's two course meal. Uh, and then supper would be combination salad uh, or, or baked vegetable. So notice how it, within that first month, those first two weeks, lunchtime, vegetable meal, evening, baked fruit, fruit meal. Then the second two weeks, uh, lunch is, uh, we have the, uh, the two course meal, but now we're switching it around. Now we're having fruit in the afternoon and along with the salad, but fruit in the afternoon and then the vegetable in the evening. So notice how we, uh, we shifted it. It shit went from one thing to something else on a different week. Now we're talking about the system. This is as, uh, as plain as it gets uh, when trying to understand, well, what, what do you do? What's the system? You know, the system, the eating part of the system within the context of the transition diet. The third two weeks, now we're going to have a full lunch uh, or a, a full fruit meal for lunch. And now you can have a raw fruit meal if you can handle it. If you still need to have baked or cooked uh, fruit, uh, then make it uh, the, the baked or cooked fruit. Then uh, supper time, the combination salad. So we're getting closer toward what we will go over in the next session, which is Eret's standard sanitarium menu. The standard default menu is fruit in the afternoon and vegetable meal, combination salad and cooked vegetable in the evening. That's, that's the standard. So you're seeing that we're, we're moving in that direction, but we're doing so very systematically. So the fourth two weeks, lunch, first, uh, uh, the first meal or a fruit meal, uh, raw or cooked, and supper, uh, raw or baked fruit 
course with the uh, with the combination salad uh, follow or yeah follow with the combination salad so I want you to take some time and really meditate on this and kind of analyze and, and break it all down and and look at it instead of trying to look at the details of it just say okay vegetable meal in the afternoon fruit meal in the evening then the next time fruit meal in the afternoon vegetable meal in the evening then fruit meal in the afternoon vegetable meal in the evening fruit meal in the afternoon vegetable meal in the evening that systematic logic is uh, very very important just uh, if you can understand that and you can start to apply that you can because you can start to apply that outside of this just this you know you don't, you don't have to always go back over and over and over again it's not just practicing these different weekly recommendations this is a template that is the template for living on this diet long term you take this template and you start to evolve it while maintaining the principles so a lot of people uh, get concerned about uh, losing weight too uh, too fast if you find that you're losing weight too fast the elimination should be slowed down by uh, eating the well toasted bread sweet potatoes white potatoes also could be uh, potentially used personally I got off of the white potatoes and I did not use them for my own personal transition because I noticed that they triggered uh, bad things for me they triggered uh, worse foods I didn't want white potato without sour cream and uh, and bacon bits and cheese and you know all the butter uh, but with sweet potato I didn't crave all that other stuff I could have a sweet potato and not have triggers for other things and they eliminate better than uh, than the starchier white potato even well baked so should you feel an intense craving at, uh, uh, for meat, then, uh, and, and sometimes that, that meat craving comes back, you're like, what is going on? Then uh, Eric recommends to eat only vegetables on those days without any fruits. You know, go, don't eat any fruit for a day or two, just stick to the vegetables. That's gonna slow your elimination down. And I would also recommend doing an enema, which we will talk about in future sessions. Uh, so that will, uh, that will be coming. We'll get a little bit deeper into s of that type of methodology of what to do with really bad cravings. A dissolved mystery people do not believe in a fruit diet or a mucusless diet because as soon as they have a healing crisis, they may get weak and feel horrible. At some time, uh, at the same time, this produces a strong, almost irresistible craving for wrong foods, and you can especially old favorites things that you used to really enjoy now I call this crackhead mode <laughs> which is just my, my personal uh, 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 title but w what I experienced was uh, and this was early in the transition I would start cr really craving mucus forming foods because I'd be off of it for a while then out of nowhere I'd just start craving all this stuff that I hadn't eaten in a while uh, whether it was was cakes and pies or uh, a pizza uh, hot dogs and chili dogs and, and uh, spaghettis and all all this stuff I started craving uh, and so I, I had some advanced transitional techniques that I used to get me through some of these uh, some of these things so I won't get into that at this moment uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later but just keep that in mind it's okay you know don't feel guilty or be hard on yourself because you start to crave mucus forming foods uh, it's gonna happen and the question is are you prepared and knowledgeable with your transitional methodology that you can make a good choice even when you start to crave some of the worst foods on the planet knowing what you know about transition are you able to make a better choice than what you are craving and that is that's the battleground that's where a lot of a lot of stuff happens in that realm 
uh, and find, find out what foods are most laxative for you. For every meal of diet of healing must leave the body as soon as possible. As things are loosened up, the poisons dissolve and it can be really uncomfortable. So you want to find uh, certain combinations. Your combination salad should have a laxative effect. It should, it should move through and be a good broom. The fruits that you choose, find things that you find uh, that eliminate well. Certain foods prove to be more laxative under certain conditions. So this is the kind of study. See, the, these are the kinds of things. Once you know that this is what you are studying within your own body and your own physiology, you know that this is what you are looking out for, then you are able to uh, uh, figure this, these things out for yourself. May, do, do blackberries eliminate good for you? Do grapes eliminate? How about mangoes, watermelon? All of these different fruits are going to eliminate differently in your body and you wanna find the ones that eliminate the best, that create the best bowel movement so that, uh, that move through uh, uh, with the most efficiency. Eat the foods that you have personally found to be the most laxative Always help with an enema. If you do not experience a regular bowel movement before retiring, help with an enema, a natural laxative, or both. Enemas are very good aid to elimination during the transition diet, and we will talk about how to do an enema in an upcoming uh, session, and we will get a little bit more deep, deeply into enema techniques. Uh, and how to systematically integrate it with the mucus's diet. Uh, a natural laxative that Eric recommends is eating a fruit dried prunes or figs uh, before other juicy fruits and uh, uh, also use colon irrigation or laxatives until the bowels are cleansed from old sticky waste and unnatural foods. So when I work with people that have trouble uh, digesting or have trouble eliminating uh, uh, and having natural bowel movements. This is something that I often recommend. Uh, eat uh, anywhere from five to 10 dried prunes, follow it up with some kind of juicy fruit. I usually recommend something like a couple apples, uh, some uh, blackberries or something like that. Grapes can work. And the object isn't to have an unnatural sort of laxative diarrhea effect. It's to get things gently moving. So it's really the word, I usually don't even like to use the word laxative. I like to use the word mover because that suggests something that just gently gets things moving. And that's what we want. We don't want to, uh, uh, these pur pur purges. We don't, these big purg, uh, 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 kind of purgatory kind of uh, uh, so-called cleanses. That's not what this is about. This is about the, uh, the slow and systematic movement of waste out of the body. Eric recommends his famous uh, interclean formula, an intestinal broom, that uh, uh, the recipe, the full recipe for that can be found in the annotated version of the mucus's diet. And I will put information below on exactly where to locate that. Uh, other uses of bao herbs, uh, you can sprinkle them over salads, brew them as, as a tea, a uh, half teaspoon in a cup of boiling water and then remove the heat uh, and allow it to steep for 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, so Eric doesn't talk a whole lot about herbs, uh, but he does have one of the most influential stomach and bowel formulas that's ever been made. Uh, a lot of the modern day herbalists that have uh, popular products, they studied Eric's work and this uh, was one of the first uh, items that they took a, took a look at. And you can see here we have a, a little history. There's a an image of an inner clean uh, truck. Uh, this was something that Fred Hirsch really uh, really promoted and it got really fairly popular as a uh, as a natural laxative. To summarize lesson 15, in lesson 15 Arnold Eric shares the first part of his transition diet process which is a fundamental part of his overall healing system. He emphasizes that chronic illness cannot simply be corrected through a long fast or radical fruit diet, but that a gradual approach should be used. 
Aerith defines a mucus lean diet as one that still includes certain mucus forming foods that may be used during certain periods of the transition diet. He explains that the speed of elimination can be controlled and regulated through the quantity and quality of foods used. In general, mucus forming foods slow down one's elimination, while mucus free foods promote more rapid elimination. Eris suggests that the non-breakfast plan, or taking in no solid food early in the day, is highly beneficial and recommended. He also explains that mucusless diet practitioners should never drink during meals since mixtures of solid food and liquid are hard for the body to digest. Finally, in the remainder of the lesson, Eret offers menu recommendations for the first two months. Eret does not intend this plan to strictly be used verbatim by each practitioner. With his examples, Arid seeks to reveal the gradual and systematic nature of the transition diet as a whole. Finally, Arid reveals the formula for his herbal intestinal broom, better known today as Interclean. The key words for lesson 15 are mucus lean and coleslaw. The review questions for lesson 15. Number one, why is it not good to drink or eat chunky soups? Number two, why should drinking be avoided during meals? What should be done instead? Three, fats of all kinds should be avoided, true or false, why or why not, explain. Four, why is it important for a diet of healing to be digested and eliminated from the body quickly? Five, what does Eret mean by saying that the vegetable meal should create a broom? Six, what does the term mucus lean mean? And seven, describe the main components of Eret's standard combination salad. In our next session, we will go over lesson 16, the transition diet part two, and we will continue our discussion of transitional methodology and explore some specialized recipes and menu plans for different situations. Until then, peace, love, and breath.